Jeannie. Do How like important? The- <laughs> I was going to say. Hi. Do like- Hi. Do you like the main? I do. It's so good to see you because I always hear you. So it's so nice to see you over. This is great. You too. I love the headband. You look so cute. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so how important do you think flowers are to a wedding? Do you think that this is something that is an extra thing or do you think that this is the main event? I mean, you're asking me. So, I mean, I think it's huge. Me and my husband got into a big fight with it though, about it, though, if I'm being honest. Like, he felt like, oh, you know, we'll go simple – put a rose on each table, you know, literally, like it was, it was a really horrible conversation. <laughs> and I was like, no. And, um, yeah, I, sp- I spent a lot of money on flowers. It was important to me. I think I really just, uh, I'm all about visuals and ambiance. And, you know, for me, it was, I wanted to walk into a room filled with beautiful flowers. And how no, did you pick no them? No expense you- spared. No, I'm just kidding. I wish, but. <laughs> did your florist walk you through the process or did you have a vision that you took to the florist? So a little bit of both. I, I mean, I was on Pinterest a lot prior to the, you know, to the consultation. So I had some pictures. Um, I, I didn't know much about it though. I didn't know what anything entailed. You know, she, she needed to know a little bit more about the room and the space. And I just had some pictures. I mean, you know, the pictures I had probably weren't appropriate for my venue space, um, but color wise, you know, t- you know the, the time of the year was May, it was in the spring. So we had a sort of a spring theme going on, which is what I wanted more of, um, everybody says rustic today and rustic could mean so many things, but I, I really like that fresh look. Like you just picked up flow- flowers from the garden. Like a wild, yeah, a wild like, look, nothing yeah, like too when, structured. That's right. Kind of like when you came to my house and you brought like that beautiful wild bouquet and I was like, did, did you just pick this up? It's so like off the floor. It's so pretty. I love it. <laughs> I love arranging flowers. I know nothing about it, but I love – I don't buy per, already put together arrangements. I always go to like Trader Joe's or Whole Foods and I grab yeah. a little this, a little that. Exactly. It's, it together. It's, it's creative. It's fun. And and that was – I'm all about that. So I, I loved this part of my wedding. And, yeah. um, you know, I budgeted pro- a lot for it because I had heard that, you know, flowers are an expensive deal. I knew that going in. I didn't know quite how expensive it was going to be. Obviously, I had a lot of guests. You know, like I said, I I lied to my husband initially. He's going to listen to this, so whatever at this point. I I lied to him initially about the cost. (laughs) Um, And then, you know, whatever. He kind of like, he figured it out as time went on, you know. Do you still have your bouquet? No, I don't. I actually, what I did do though, I took um, a few of the flowers and I, I, I wrapped them um, and I put them into like a little bag and I saved them. So, oh, yeah, it was special. Everything very was very sweet. special. Yeah. How about so you? you? Have them in a special spot. We actually just found my my bouquet in the garage. <laughs> we cleaned out the garage <laughs> and we had two shopping bags put together. We didn't have it preserved or anything, but we found these shopping bags and and Frank opened it up to see what was inside and he goes, uh. <laughs> what's this <laughs> this look familiar and they it still smelled great that was the cool thing is is I had roses and it did not lose its smell so and what what or month did scent. you get married October what but, what was your colors but understand we got married in Florida so right, right, it's right, not okay. like you know October so is the yeah. it has like a full ambiance <laughs> so we did uh, blush and ivory was pretty much yeah. our colors for the wedding so we did uh and as I told you before we did an assembly line for our our flowers huge mistake stress-wise because it it put me in such a space that I couldn't recover from for the wedding. <laughs> we were doing it the day before the rehearsal dinner. Um, oh, just wow. assembly okay. line putting together. We had one florist that went to get the the flowers for us and taught us how to do the center pieces and the oh, there were wow. like 10 of us so putting they, it all together. They were putting they were teaching you? He taught us like here is I made this, do this first, add this Add, add this in. Oh, very in. cool. And That's of course, cool. none of us, none of us looked anything close to what he did. Wow. But we did it, and yeah. uh, it was a fun experience. Yeah. But I could have thought of a million things I could have done that day, uh, other than make my own flower arrangements. Welcome to our podcast. So you're engaged. Now what? So today, we're going to be talking to Kim Lovett. Uh, she is owner of Marquee Florals. And Kim, welcome. Hi. Nice to talk to you girls. Hi. Nice to talk to you too. <laughs> Thanks for coming on and it's nice to meet you. My pleasure. And how long have you been doing this, Kim? How long have uh, you been in business? 35 years. 
Wow. Wow. So how did this happen? Because we were talking before we we started rolling here, but you mentioned that you went to FIT. So you have a design background. And so how, what's the transition into, into flowers? I was a young mother and um, needed to get out of the house. Um, I was, you know, staying at home and I went to work at a little flower shop near my house, just part-time, just to get out a little bit. And it really was my thing. And it just happened. You know, you started making flowers and I just knew where to put the flower and how to put it together. And it was just something naturally that my hands did. It's therapeutic. It was. And um, so then I was doing um, some work. I got introduced to people that owned a catering facility and they were opening up a new facility and have a flower shop in the facility. And they asked me if I wanted to um, open it up for them and start running it. And that was the Grand Marquis in Oldbridge. And that's oh, yeah. how I we've shot there many oh, times, right? A million times. Oh. It's been there forever. So wow. I did my first job there. Um, and I went to work for them full time and we developed a whole flower shop and bar mitzvah department. And, um, so exclusively for the venue. So any couple or for that venue client well, to- at that time and then okay. 15 years ago, um, I opened up my own shop. I would imagine that there's like a little bit of, well, there's a lot of talent that's involved. Cause like you just said, you naturally your hands just knew the placement and like you were very creative with it. And then also I would, I would think that as time goes on, you know, you, you learn a lot more about uh, specifics when it comes to flowers and, and space and, and time of the year. And I don't know, is this culture have anything to do with it as well? I'm sure. Right. Because our, you know, for example, our Indian weddings are super, super colorful and super fun. And do they request specific types of flowers? Do, you know, how does that work? I think that every culture does do a little bit something yeah. different in what they're, you know, in what, in the design and what they're purchasing. Right. Um, I mean, when we're doing Indian weddings, it's always bright and colorful. So gorgeous. We're using, yeah. You know, we're using hot pinks and yellows and oranges and purples and it it's beautiful yeah. um i mean just gorgeous and then other cultures i would say you know are just doing regular things just like you were doing a blush in an ivory wedding mm-hmm. and a, you know they're picking up the, the reds and the pinks for the fall and you know that kind of thing and so when you just to, just to backpedal a little bit when you went to grand marquis and you were there in-house florist mm-hmm. you're talking everything from tables to bouquets, boutonnieres, top to bottom, like full service? Full service. We did uh, table centerpieces, boutonnieres, corsages. We did entrance flowers. We did decorated head tables. We got into fabric from the ceilings, hanging flowers. We did so much hanging flowers from the ceiling. Um, Cocktail tables. You know, and really produced place cards. I mean, anything that you could possibly think of. Oh, we, so place that cards to come do with from decorating. They come from oh, you. Uh, lots of times they do. Um, lots of times they do, and um, we're designing the place card to match the invitation. And now it's just not even place cards so much. We're doing big boards. You know, the boards on the easels that are um, yeah. framed. We do them on mirrors, um, on chalk boards. Wow. So we get into a lot of that. And um, then we do the typical, the typical place card. We even do them on window frames. Where oh, love the, that. So written creative. On the window frames. Oops. Yes. So any kind of creative thing. I have a full, um, I have a full-time uh, artist that works with us um, and she helps with uh, the production of all those things. All of that is designed and produced in-house. Wow. And you know, I always wondered too, Kim, you know, you walk into a venue, a space, and you see a hundred plus tables and you see these gr- these magnificent centerpieces. And I'm like, how long does it take this team Great to do question. this? How many people are working? What's the time frame with this? And I mean, I guess let's backtrack for a second. How many weddings does your team do in a, in a typical weekend? So there's time slots. Okay. So you've got Friday night, Saturday afternoon, 12 mm-hmm. o'clock start, mm-hmm. Saturday night, mm-hmm. Sunday the same thing, Sunday mm-hmm. morning weddings, and then Sunday night. So in each time slot, we can do two parties. So we okay. can do two on Friday, two Saturday morning, two Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. So we can work up to, to for 10 parties in a weekend. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have the capabilities. There's nine full-time people in my shop between, you know, um, Mary in the office. And then um, my sister runs the um, production of uh, the flowers. 
and I have girls that are specifically making bouquets and girls that are just packing, you know, packing for the jobs for the week where, you know, we're getting everything ready to go onto the truck for the weekends. Wow. And and for something that's super elaborate and different, do you have to have like a rehearsal, if you will, or do you have to have like a practice session like before, if you haven't done it yet, if you haven't, you know, produce this type of a centerpiece and then show the team sort of what you did? Like, how does that work? So everything is done way prior to the wedding. So when we have our consultation with the bride, we come up with the design, then we make a sample centerpiece. So Uh, this way the bride can see it before the wedding. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We make any changes and do everything that we need to do with it at that point. Then we photograph Mm -hmm. and we formula like a recipe. Ah, and so, okay. right. And so when it goes into production two weeks prior, then we get the formula. We know, we find out from the bride how many tables and it just goes into production that way. And then when they make the centerpiece, um, the picture is on the wall and we're, and we're ready to go. Got it. To you go. know, Got it. you're dealing with a live product. So mm-hmm. has this ever great, like affected a wedding getting close and you can't get the flowers that somebody chose? You know, it's very funny. Um, Every once in a while that will happen, but I will go to the ends of the earth to find that flower. I mean, it's always somewhere, you know what I mean? A lot of it has to do with um, if it's not available, price is an issue, but you know what, when you promise a bride something and if it costs me extra money, I got to do what I have to do. I mean, I'm not going to call the bride, you know, week before her party and say, Hey, um, it's too expensive. We can't get it. No. Sure. We bite the bullet and we do what we have to do. When we make a promise and we commit to something, then we're going to we're gonna do it. Then you follow through. Yes. Now, have you had brides where, where you do send over the test? Do they change their minds? Do they say? Oh, absolutely. I mean, You know, do a little times, bit more of this, more height, more color. I mean, nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten, we get it perfect. But then you come in and people... You know, they visualize something in their mind, the bride, and then they come into the store and they're like, oh, I didn't realize that those colors were going to look like that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that this was going to be bigger than it really is. Lots of times because my shop is, my showroom um, is not the size of a catering hall, that they'll come in and they'll see this huge tall arrangement and they'll be like, oh my God, this is ginormous. But, you know, you have to realize you're in a catering facility, 20 foot ceilings, big tables, when we're in a small salon. So it is kind of interesting. Um, but people, you know, do change their minds and that's okay. We go with the flow. If they're not happy with that, then we're going um, we're gonna to make a second sample to do what we need to do to get it right. Mm-hmm. Great. How, would, you, would you say that you have a particular style? Traditional, you know, modern? Is, do people come to you because you're, you have a look to your work? I have to tell you that there's nothing that we haven't done. So... Um, the array of equipment that we have on hand after all of these years is almost endless. What kind of equipment? So, oh, I mean, flower stands and um, hookahs and, yeah. um, you know, tablecloths and all this different decor. Um, we have an endless amount of all of these things. So if somebody comes in and says they want to have a very rustic-y, natural wedding, we've got it. If they want to have a contemporary wedding, we've got it. There's nothing that we haven't d- done. And it's always nice when somebody comes in with something that's, that we, you know, there's a challenge or you look at that and you say, oh, I haven't done that before. You know, I want to, um, you know, you can get creative. Um, and so it's, it's a good thing. So I would say most of the stuff is now rustic, but Mm -hmm. I would say contemporary look as well. Um, Okay. So question for you, season wise, flowers, what if, I'm, I'm assuming if somebody comes in a particular month and they want peonies and it's not in season, you'll get them, but the price is going to be affected. A, a peony especially, I mean, there's even when it's, when there is season, price doesn't have anything to do with it at a certain point because sometimes you just can't even get it. I mean, yeah. so we wouldn't sell it to the client. So we know when the seasons are for certain flowers. So we know pe- peony is May, June, July. Um, and then they come back a little bit in the winter, but we would never sell a peony in January, February, March, because right. it's Cause just, just not even available, it. you know, it's not realistic. And okay. so after working all of these years, you know, what is available in, you know, in the time frame of the year. So yeah. you know what to sell the bride. And then this way there's no disappointments and you know, you know what you're going to get. And we're able to offer them different alternatives. 
Is that now when you talk about like, uh, you know, flowers and being in season, not being in season, and obviously price would increase if it's harder to get the flower. Um, are there a group of really popular flowers that tend that are really pricey that but they but their brides really just want them all the time? I would say people really want they love ranunculus, which mm-hmm. is like a baby flower. It looks kind of like a peony, but it's yes. Mini. Yeah. Um, people love ranunculus. They love lysanthus. Um, for a very long time, um, not expensive, but everybody wanted a hydrangea. Everybody. Yes. And yes. so at a certain point, that was, it still is a very popular flower. Um, it's kind of been more on the low down now because it was so popular for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are definitely things that, um, different kinds of vines um, yes. that are pricey and you see them in the Pinterest pictures and you see them in, you know, the bridal magazines and the girls look at these and it, sometimes it's um, a matter of finding it, resourcing it, and then it being a little bit sometimes too pricey. I was a bride. You, yeah. you heard a little bit about, you know, I, I really didn't have a florist. We yes. hired a friend who was a florist and he helped us. He was like a family friend. He, he taught us what to do. So for brides that are listening, you have brides that have um, may perhaps value floral uh, arrangements as very little as a, as a smaller part of like their budget allocation. And then you have people like Jeannie who mm-hmm. flowers are a ma- the main event because they create. So could you talk to us a little bit about s- the contrast? Somebody who doesn't have a budget, what's the first thing that they have to invest in? What are things that they could possibly do on a more affordable scale? And then I want to know about the most extravagant wedding that you've done. Yeah, I was going to so, say, what's the craziest thing you've ever done? Craziest? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've done some crazy things. <laughs> but, um, you know, when a client comes to me and I really don't care what their budget is, I mean, that is like so important. Um, I think that every single wedding is just as important whether you have – $10,000 to spend on weddings or whether you have a thousand dollars to spend on your, on your flower budget, you know? So when the bride comes in, there's always a solution. Um, so you add more greens to a centerpiece and use less flower. Um, you do lower centerpieces instead of taller settle pieces. But I think that the most important pieces in the structure of everything that you need, the bridal bouquet has to be hot banging on. I mean, that's in every picture. The bride is holding it. She's got this beautiful dress. You know, she's gorgeous. And you have to have the flowers that are going to accentuate that. Being amazing doesn't mean it has to be big. It just has to be special and match that dress. And then bridesmaids flowers, I think, are, you know, kind of second on the list. I mean, as long as the bridesmaids have something pretty and they're holding it and it looks nice, it doesn't have to be um, as elaborate as the brides. You know, the girls walk down the aisle with it, take some pictures with it. And then, you know, it winds up on a head table or a cake table or whatever. Sure. So definitely something nice. And then boutonnieres, you know, men are always inexpensive. The boutonniere is the least expensive thing that you have to do. <laughs> um, and then for me, I think that the table centerpieces are super important. It's in, you know, all the photographs in the room. It's the first impression when you walk into the dining room and you get that ah feeling, you know. And there's, um, I love tall centerpieces if, you know, they can be done. And if the tall isn't in the budget for all of the tables, you know, we do a lot of the high low. So half of the centerpiece is tall, half of them low. Um, Why is tall more expensive? Because it's much bigger. So you're using double and sometimes triple the amount of flowers. Okay. Um, and so it, it, you know, it becomes definitely more expensive. And I'm sure that there's, um, some kind of fee like to rent for you guys to rent all those like vases, those, you know, the, the. I have such an extraordinary amount of stands okay. that are available that I included them in the price of my mm-hmm. centerpiece. Oh, so cool. there's no extra fee. Yeah. Um, it's just, I have them, we're able, you know, you're able to use them. The only time that we get into a fee is when people want special kind of um, candelabras and specialty, yeah. like a really specialty item that yeah. I don't have. And then there's a rental fee on something like yeah. that. Um, but otherwise, I have so much equipment, they can pick whatever they'd like in a, mm-hmm. in a stand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just reminded me too, Kim. I remember like when they were opening up the doors to my, I, I was, I was, that was, that was exactly what was on my mind. I was like, yeah. I have to see what this looks like right now. Cause it's, I, you it's know, the, you're, it, cause you're a part of the process and you just, that's the whole, it's the big shebang. It's like, it oh, is. Let's... It's the wow moment, yeah. you know, and we can plan all of this on paper and in the office and we're talking about it and you see the, you know, the sample in the office. But when you walk into that room 
and mm-hmm. everything is set, you and know, lit. And, I'm sure lighting and lit. has a lot to do with it. Big yeah. time. I mean, you know, I've been doing this flower business so long that there was no lighting back in the day, you know, and <laughs> yeah. it, every, you walked into the room, the, you know, the lights were dim. It looked pretty, but yeah. now you know, there's all these enhancements. And so the lighting in the room has so much to do with it. And you walk in and it's that wow moment, you know, yeah. and it just, it fills everything that you want. And for me, it's such a, oh, I get such a high when I'm standing there and the bride walks into the room and her dream came true. Yeah. Uh, now, are you usually the there whole for that moment? It. We're there a lot. Um, I mean, my staff uh, and myself um, are on the jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we're doing se- ceremonies um, inside of the venue, we're there till after the ceremony is over. So we get to show the bride that room and we walk in with them and um, we have a lot of interaction with the bride. So uh, I would say more about 60, 70% of the time we are there when they walk in that space. So it is, it's quite exciting. That is very exciting. Yeah. So what do you call that thing that wraps around the flowers to to bind them together? (laughs) It's just, I just call it a handle wrap. A handle I mean, wrap. You know, okay. A hand, I mean, that's what I call it. I've heard like um, collar. I've heard yeah, like, you know. You know what? I, I, <laughs> like reading some notes and I was like, a collar? What the heck is a collar? But your <laughs> hand, and then I looked it up online. I was like, what's a collar? Her handle wrap. So handle we, do, <laughs> handle wrap. we do some really pretty handle wraps. I always ask the bride what her dress looks like. I always want to see a picture. And so we'll do um, to match her her dress so if she's got a little bit of buttons going down the uh, back of her dress we'll get little yeah. covered buttons How and we'll precious. do a wrap and we'll do the covered buttons down and then it depends does a bride want to see the the stems on the bottom or should we cover it up all the way um, that's what i would do different with mine my stems they went on for days and i, I think, know <laughs> i think i was supposed to cut them I, yeah, like, I think are. they went down to my knees. Okay? <laughs> I, like, I, see oh, that is, I have to tell you, I have a nightmare about it. Nightmare. When I see these bouquets, like in magazines and stuff, and I see these stems hanging out the bottom, I'm like, she's got a dress with a million jewels all over it. And yeah. then there's like these raggedy stems sticking out. I know. I, I, it's, it's the worst. I, if it's I right. knew better, I would have snipped them myself. If I saw you, I would have had my clippers and did it for you. So, and we do, one of our signature wraps is a, a beautiful French braid. And we do a What's little that bit of Oh, cool. So it's basically satin ribbon, chiffon ribbon. And then we're wrapping and knotting in all little oh, knots oh, wow. going down. So very, classy. very pretty. And depending on the dress, we'll do an accent with it. Sometimes we even get um, to a very rustic, you know, outdoor wedding. Um, the bride has a more informal kind of a dress. There's wire that is uh, wrapped, and it almost I've looks like a branch. It looks like, and it's it's oh, wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can mm-hmm. wrap the stems with those with like a branch look, and that's also very very beautiful. I love that. So my thing is, I like to I like to make that handle to match the dress. It's in all the pictures, you know, um, when they're taking the picture of the bouquet and the rings and the shoes. You know, they do those those pre shoots. I love it, and it looks pretty rather yeah. than just having like a then just a, a ring. Yeah, than a about. collar. Yeah, it's a collar, right? Careless. That's what I'm going to call it now. I'm going to call it a collar. But so, I think the detail is so important, and that's a detail that may not everybody's going to see. Um, but for the bride, when she's holding it, it should be special, and not just like a any, just like an anything tied together. So it's yeah. meaningful. Yeah, I've seen pictures that we've shot where you, you, there's a great shot of the bouquet, but then it will have maybe a picture of somebody they've lost. Yes brought into it and that always makes me cry like that they have them with them walking down the aisle I'm gonna tear up but it's it's It's, so precious so they would bring you like a locket or something yes we have lockets if they don't have it they email us the picture we print it put it into the locket um we've also done where a bride unfortunately has lost her dad and her dad was was a tie guy you know every time you saw him he had a tie on Aww. and we took one of his ties and we wrapped the bouquet of the handle with his so tie. So emotional. I'm thinking no, about, uh, I'm, I'm, at, I'm thinking is. about a video we shot and she did that just that. Um, sh- I can't think of her name right now, but yeah, it always stood out to me that like we, we got a really nice shot of that. It, in, it's in really the pretty. highlight. It was really yeah, precious. It, uh-huh. it really is. I think it's, those are special things. And um, I've had where we've done handkerchiefs from grandma's, 
that are pinned into the oh, handle. Very, very sweet. pretty rosary beads. Um, yeah. Very pretty. So I, I love those little personal, you yes. know, and that very person's sweet. with you walking down the aisle. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. so, so special. Yeah, it is. And, really. and do you, do, what kind of other, uh, you know, what else do you add to this? Like what kind of other d- decor items? Like, I, I mean, I, I know that for me, I had a beautiful runner that mm-hmm. was really important. The church aspect of my wedding was important, so I had I had I had actually two really pretty bouquets um, made up for the altar, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, talk about what you do for for the ceremony and what else you know you 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 kind of throw in there too. So ceremonies, we're doing uh, beautiful, depending on you know what religion you are. Yeah. So we're doing beautiful chuppas, gorgeous yes. array of oh my goodness. that we have. I, I've oh my seen goodness. this a before. zillion styles, right? A zillion gorgeous. styles of chuppa, mm-hmm. fabric, wood, crochet. I mean, it's just it's, it's endless. stunning. I've seen, it I've really seen is unbelievable. And endless. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, many different kinds of chuppas. There's nothing that we can't make. Mm-hmm. You know, if there's something that's not in my book or on my Instagram, a bride brings us something. We can totally can make it. it. We did a, a wood circle um, not very long ago. That was absolutely spectacular. A bride brought it from Pinterest and she says, can you do this? I said, absolutely. I have um, craftsmen on my staff. I have somebody that does welding, another guy that does woodworking. Wow. So we really have the capabilities to do and build anything. But um, for the ceremony, you know, when we're at church, it's two altar arrangements, very pretty pew bows, lots of different ways you could do those with flowers and ribbon and that kind of thing. And aisle runner um, at churches, a little difficult because a lot of the churches now don't take it. But when we're doing ven- we're doing uh, wedding ceremonies in the venues, we can get creative because there's no, you know, there's no rules. Um, so we do beautiful um, petals and runners and all that kind of stuff. Uh. When we're doing in the venue, what's really very interesting is because we're on site um, and our staff stays during the ceremony, we're able to use your table center pieces in the ceremony room. So mm. you can get a chuppah and then not have to worry about anything else because we're using all your table center pieces and we're putting them on columns. Um, oh, wow. Doing, right. Layering in different ways, columns, candles on the bottom, flowers on the bottom, different things. So you're reusing what you have, which really saves in the budget. Yeah. So I like to do things like that because sometimes, if, especially if your budget is small, you're able to not buy all these different things, but you're able to then take the money that you saved on the ceremony and we can put it into the centerpieces. You know, take that extra $2. So resourceful. I, yeah. I love that. Just yeah. Yeah. using I mean, what it, you have, making it go a long way. Right. I mean, I just think that you have to design and buy smart and utilize your things in a smart way. Um, I mean, at the and, end of the day, not many people have endless budgets. No, and and you so, know, espe- especially something too like flowers. I feel the same. I, like I remember in my head thinking, "Oh my god, all of this beauty and all of this creation." And yeah, you know, at the end of the night, I, what am I can take them all home with me? How can we, you know, exactly what Natasha right. said? How can we be resourceful with this? So, so that's you know, a really cool point. And yeah, by the I mean, way, your website's amazing. Yes. Oh, like, it. yes. It, 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 your centerpieces, everything that you have, everything. like, it's so beautiful. Thank you. I, Thank I, you. Na- it made me appreciate what flowers do, that it's that ah moment that you mentioned when you walk into a room. So you're it very, is. very talented. And Thank you yes. very much. I also have a great staff that works with me. Oh, so see, what just, a wonderful boss you are. Like, just, yes, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> listen, it's just not me. I mean, oh, listen, you can't, that's awesome. you can't do what we do without having an incredible team. And my sister and I- I want to hug her. Oh, I wish I could hug you. I wish we could. I know. Do even this. if there wasn't this new, we can't <laughs> hug. But uh, my, my sister has been working with me forever. My sister is probably one of the most incredible um floral designers that you'll ever meet in your life, super duper talented. And, um, you know, we collaborate and, you know, lots of times, um, I do all the sales in the shop and the design and, um, but sometimes I'll sell something and I'll bring it to the production. And my sister will say to me, are you out of your mind? How are we going to make this? I said, listen, if I can think of it, it can be done. And sometimes they get real mad at me, but I'm like, get over it. We're going to figure it out. Yeah, and you can then do we it. Figure That's it out, amazing. And everybody's like, oh my God, look what we did. We created something new. I said, yeah, you know, it, 
if you really can visualize it and think of it, it can happen. It can happen. You I'm know? the same yeah. way. Every yeah. once in a while, we'll work with a couple yeah. that has these really crazy ideas. <laughs> Do you know, we want you to come in the helicopter with us and come for a ride. We want shots there and then we're going to drop out of it. So, it, <laughs> and I'm all for it. I'm just like, let's do it. Let's make it happen. And then production who's so realistic, just like your sister, yeah. they're like, okay, <laughs> no, but you're not the one producing this thing. Let's talk about this. It's so funny. So. I, always see, I always see Natasha's notes and they're like 87 pages long in HubSpot. And I'm like, wait a, wait a minute. Like this explains this now. <laughs> With nothing spelled correctly. <laughs> you know, everything's misspelled, mishmash. I can picture her getting so excited. Like, yes, that can happen. Yes, yes, yes. that's how I get it. That's how I get it. I'm like, yes, yeah. this can happen. We can make this. We can do this. And then yeah. everybody in the shop is like, she's out of her mind. Yeah. I say, yeah, we'll talk. My sister says to me sometimes, you know what? They're talking about you. But the employees, I yeah. say, ah, let them talk about me. They'll get let over it. Like, they'll get over it in 15 minutes. But then the day of the party, everybody's proud of it, you know, and they're snapping sure. pictures and they're, and they're posting them and all of this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you guys don't know how talented you really are. So I like to be the person pushing the envelope. Yeah. Because Love when it. you push the envelope, you stay, you know, you stay relevant in the yeah. industry. And the confidence and, within your staff is is, yeah. is built even that much more. Too, Absolutely. Which is cool. So after yeah. thirty five years doing this and still being relevant, I think is super important because you have to constantly be changing with the times and mm-hmm. you know with what's very true. Out there. And, you and you have to be have a, to. Yeah. you have to be a dreamer. You have to see. Pa- otherwise, things get so boring doing it's the same stale. thing. Yeah. You know, we talk about uh, that now time. too, especially with everything going on in the world, you know, how we need to make this, sh- you know, we just have to go along with it. Stay on ships. top of it. Yeah. And yeah, what, there's a, there's yeah. a demand. Yeah. A certain demand. There, there is. I mean, brides are still um, calling and I'm doing, you know, FaceTime appointments mm-hmm. and we're booking parties. I mean, I have to say we're yeah. not producing parties right now, but brides are hopeful and they're ex- still excited about yeah. their weddings. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of disappointment going on right now because- when that bride feels the disappointment that their wedding can't be, it hurts my heart, you know? Yeah. yeah. Imagine, like, Jeannie, r- imagine when you got married, like, finding out a few weeks before yeah. your wedding, this isn't happening. Right. <laughs> no, you know, I have to tell you the truth now. When I when I speak to my couples, I try not to mention anything. I, I mean, obviously, everybody right. knows what's going right. on. Duh. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, you know, um, they're excited. You know, it's next year. It, usually and you know right. let, let's and talk about okay. fun things let's talk about the great things that are going to happen exactly. and just try to stay positive and stay hopeful they yeah. have a whole nother year to have fun planning times that's right you know? that's right that, that's More what time. i say so yeah. i have a, i have few couples now that are getting married uh, calling me for small weddings in the backyard having 10 to 15 people because yep. they need to be married you know and they don't want to wait another year to you know to, to be that's exactly that's becoming a trend we're getting it the is. same so, right. Calls. So we're starting to do, um, I have a few in July where we're going to do small weddings in the backyard. Nice. And that's good. They're still cool. keeping their, their date for their reception. Yeah. But they're getting the legality, you know, to taken care of. Um, I want to have families. I want to make babies. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 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 That's what's happening. That's the reality of it. They're like, we yeah. want to have babies. I'm 30. I want to move on. You know, let's yeah. do the, the ceremony. The clock is ticking. I need to, <laughs> I need to get this done. You know? The so clock is, it's true. It's true. People really will make, you know, I, that's the one thing I've noticed too. People will make something work. You could always make yeah. something work. You know, uh, it might not exactly be what you wanted it to be, but it's still right. going to be awesome. Right. That's and right. And you can make something happen. So I'm so curious about your process. So like if, if we can, just for a second, would you walk us through like you have a wedding sure. coming up on Saturday. When are you starting these arrangements? Mm-hmm. Are they done a couple of days in advance? How are you storing them? How are they getting there? What's what's the process like? I, sorry, I didn't mean – I've been like so, waiting and I know um, I'll forget the question. So no, no, good. Get sense. it out. Get it out. So two <laughs> weeks prior, um, we talk to the bride. She gives us her final table count. And then we find out what time the photographer is coming to um, her place where she's getting dressed, whether it's the home or a hotel or, you know, a venue. Um, we set our staff that we come a half of an hour prior to the photographer. And we have a team of girls that goes to deliver uh, bouquets. So we're able to go into the bride's space mm-hmm. and bring the bouquets in. If I sent a gentleman, 
she, he can't get in where the bride's getting dressed. He can't have interaction with her. She's getting her hair done, makeup. Yeah. She's not in, mm-hmm. You know, she's not dressed properly. The girls are in robes. Wouldn't be the I same. Can't send a man in there. So we have right. a team of girls that do those deliveries. Um, so that's what we do with, we get the photographer. Cause we, when the photographer comes in, I want him to be able to get to work and not be waiting for us. Um, so we get the photography time. Um, and then we start, um, the flowers get ordered on, um, 12 days before the event. Um, so then this way they're procured in Europe or South America or whatever, everything's set. Then um, the following week, Tuesday, week of wedding, the flowers start coming in. So they've got to get cut and conditioned and flowers have to open because they're not shipped open. Uh-huh. Um, conditioned. What, con- is yeah, what does that mean? Conditioned. conditioned. That means water with friendly <laughs> things inside of it that, you know, the flowers um, can drink, you know, something like a little bit of a, um, oh, I hate to say the word chemical because I'm, I'm all about organic, yeah. but, um, but having, you know, the flowers to be able to have food that yeah. they, is they this drink. Those, in. Are, is it similar to those little packets that yes, you get when exactly. you buy it? Okay. Exactly. And, you, and you sprinkle it's it called, in and right. I have no idea what it is, but <laughs> I I'm like, called, I, I always wonder what that is. <laughs> it's chemicals, but it's flora. It's called floral life. But yeah. Okay. So the flowers are conditioned and um, what goes in the fridge, some things stays, stay out of the refrigerator so they can open and develop. Um, and so it's a whole process. The team is off on Monday because we work the whole weekend. Mm-hmm. The team comes in on Tuesday. Um, paperwork goes up on the wall. Flowers are being cleaned and put away. We have a meeting on Wednesday um, to talk about design. If anybody has questions about what's on the paperwork for design and what has to be done, if there's any special little things like, you know, the buttons didn't come in yet for the collar of the, of the handle of the bouquet. So we got to, you know, track and make sure everything is in place. All of our equipment is in place on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. That, you know, it's in-house candles. And wow. Candles There's and so much more to this than I oh ever my God. imagined. Nobody realizes. And then I have a, a couple of people dedicated to just cleaning vases from the weekend Wow. and cleaning and getting prepped. And then they start packing in different, you know, parts of the building. So those jobs that are going out have their own, you know, specific space that every piece that's going to have to go onto that truck, onto the job is being packed. So there's people cleaning, there's people packing, and then um, the real work starts going on. So the day before the wedding is when your centerpiece gets made. So if your wedding is Friday, Thursday, we're making the centerpieces. If your wedding is fr- uh, Saturday, we're making them Friday and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a, oh, I would say about an 800 square foot refrigerator. It's huge, walk-in, and wow. that's all shelved and everything. And Twice so the as- size of like a New York City apartment. Uh, yeah, it really Basically, is. Yeah. It really uh-huh. is. And so as we're making, then we're, you know, putting into the fridge and everything is organized in the refrigerator according to party. And then um, when we're ready to deliver, we have a team that has been, you know, designated um, early in the week. And the team has gotten the um, the contracts so that they can see what's going on, if they have any questions. So our, our design team goes along with our delivery team. Oh, and, uh, okay. it's, yes. So the people that do the designing also do set up an installation. Smart. Okay. Because you have to have designers on Things the- Things get shifted in transit. Yeah. Absolutely. And sometimes, you know, you get to a venue and what you thought was going to be there and you planned on isn't there, you know? So you got to make last minute changes and adjustments. And so you have to have a designer on, on you know, on hand. And um, so then they, we come in in the early morning when the job is going to be set. We've got the truck. And we've got our gentlemen uh, and the girls, I have to say. I load trucks myself. So we load the trucks and um, the team sets out to where they they need to go. And so it's a very organized, I call it organized chaos that goes on when we're loading trucks. You know how that is. It's like my house. Yeah, organized chaos. (laughs) And um, But also during the week, we're talking to the venue, finding out what time we can get into the room. Um, because sometimes like a Saturday night party, there's a Saturday afternoon party Sure, that's letting out. So we figure out all our timing and, and we go to the job and then we set up, um, if we're on site, then we're staying on site till after the ceremony. And then the team comes home. And then, um, that evening when it's cleanup, we have another 
um, team of people that go out to clean each job after. And what over. happens to these poor flowers? I know. Okay, so <laughs> so sad. No, this this so, this, this part that's a question. Me. So they have to we ask you encourage this we encourage the guests to take home the centerpiece. Yes. So anything <laughs> that's low is pickupable, and the container okay. that it's in goes home. Yeah. So it's pickupable. It goes home. So for the guests, the tall centerpieces are in dishes that sit on top of the vase or the stand or what, the candelabra, or whatever it is. And so then those come off the table and we encourage people to take those home as well. I have to say that years ago, people would take flowers like crazy. There was they not, did. Well, not there used to be like a... Yeah. I remember growing up in like every, every hall we would have a, a party at. Everybody would get like a number. And if your number was called at your table. Now, this wasn't weddings. This was like, you know, baby showers or whatever. Then yeah. you were still, the one that got to take, too. Weddings you got to take the, the centerpiece. Yep. <laughs> I mean, like, everybody does have that one aunt, though. That's oh, like, oh, it's, it's my center. That's my centerpiece. Like, Guess you, know, you, get, you get that a lot. In my life, you know who that is? <laughs> it's my mother. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I know. So, I know. So, um, I know. For it. sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. But um, it's your right. home. Uh, is your home like full of flowers? Never. Ah, oh, need a break. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I work mostly twelve-hour days, so I get up in the morning. I do my business here in the house. I go to work, and I'm not coming home till. There's nine probably no tonight. time for that. Yeah, there's no time for that. There's <laughs> yeah. no time to clean that. So, um, very, so I was just all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed about this. Yeah, I know, I was, I just, she's like imagining botanical gardens in this woman's living room. No. I know. You know, people <laughs> say that to me all the time. Kim, your house must be filled with flowers. I'm like, no. Not <laughs> a chance. It's like the shoemaker who has holes There's in his shoe. one you know daisy. I mean? That's an old-fashioned saying, but no, yeah. it's very true. I don't have, I, unfortunately, I don't have time for that. But if I am having, you know, something in my home, a family party or whatever, Definitely, we have, you know, there's always flowers at all. And it's probably places. so pretty because you could design it. Is. It. <laughs> it really is. It really is. We do a very big deal for Christmas with, yeah. you know, gorgeous dining room table and, yeah. and all of that. I mean, so, so but do- on an everyday basis, no, because I have to clean that stuff up after yeah, it that's dies. Right. Yeah. And nobody's here to look at it. We're working all the time. So. <laughs> yeah. I, this pandemic has really, I've been working weekends my whole life, 35 years, right? All of a sudden, I've never had can never appreciate my backyard. No flowers, mm. no vegetable plants, because I'm always working. Who's watering them? I mean, it's just, it's nuts. But for the first time, I've got flowers in my backyard. Yeah. I've got a whole garden. So, you yeah. know, good, good comes out of bad, I guess. Yeah, and, sure. um, so, you know, so yes, right now my backyard is filled with flowers, but on a normal basis, no, there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell people where you live on a, no, on a non-pandemic basis. Exactly. <laughs> You'd be like, help you. he's a florist? Oh my gosh. There's you know. not even a leaf. <laughs> There's not a leaf. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, one quick question about like, you know, having a vision. If somebody comes to you with a specific picture, you do your best. You, you mentioned that, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, every brides come in some with a vision, some with none. I mean, I have brides that will tell me, bring me a picture of every single thing that they want at their wedding and they want it exactly like that photograph. You know, they've been planning this their whole life and mm-hmm. I appreciate that. I really do. So listen, you can get as close as you can um, to a centerpiece that's in a magazine just because every designer um, puts it together just a little bit differently. You can't exactly place things exact, exact. So it's because it's a natural product. It's handmade. Every flower bends a different way. But a bride says, this is what she wants here. This is what she wants on the cocktail table. And I will take those pictures and we will make that as close as possible that we can. And, um, and right, she did the design before I even, I got there. It's a, it's a Pinterest wedding and that's fine. (laughs) I, you know, I appreciate it. It's my, my, it's my pleasure to, to make that happen. And then I have brides that just come in with a photograph and that's their inspiration. And then we'll make a whole color palette for them and then we'll design each piece out. Um, I would say most girls relatively, like they know what they want, but they need for me to put it together for them. And then I'm telling them they need this. I didn't even think of that. Like there's, you know, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. I said, because that's what we're there for. That's what we're here for. for. Right. Um, So, you know, we'll start the process from the beginning 
to the end. I have a certain way that we go about when we're, um, when we're designing a wedding. We start with the bridal bouquet, bridesmaids. We do all the personal flowers. Mm-hmm. And then we talk about the ceremony. And then we talk, I mean, I'm sorry, the tables. And then we see if the tables can fit into the ceremony and we design the ceremony. And then there's all the extra stuff. You need something on your place card table, something on the cocktail tables, something for the ladies room. If they do need place cards or a place card board um, or a scroll, that's available. They need draping, chair accessories. Um, you know, I do custom tablecloths and I have an array of tablecloths in my store, you know, for rent. Um, draping on ceilings, you know, draping of rooms. I mean, I don't think there's anything that we don't do. Now the big thing is, you know, um, custom tables for the bride and groom. So table rentals, a lucite table, a mirror table, oh, you know, yeah. um, fancy chairs. We handle all of that. If they want to do a lounge in the room, um, we can arrange for lounge furniture. So, so anything you're a that designer, has to do, like full yeah, on yeah. Full designing on, the space. Des- right. Full on designing the space and the decor. This is not just a flower shop. And what's interesting about my flower shop that makes it a little different from others is I don't do the everyday work. So we are focused on weddings. And that pardon, was a question I had for you is, do you I'm have sorry, like, I, are you sending Mother's Day flowers and things like that? No, this year we did it. I have to say this year we did it because we didn't have any weddings. So, make up you know, we had clients that were calling us and saying, Kim, we need flowers for Mother's Day. Will you do it for us? And we're like, you know, okay, yeah. So, you know, we got quite a few orders and we did it. But on a normal basis, that's interesting. We did not. So, so, strictly weddings, not engagement parties, not no. weddings, engagement parties. Oh, okay, okay. Ba- I'm doing a ton of bridal showers now, baby showers, very, very big baby showers, bridal showers, anniversaries, and very big with um, I've always been very, very big with bar mitzvahs, mm-hmm. um, full decor. I have a full art shop that makes all the props wow. and does everything. Um, And then we also um, do a ton of sweet 16s. So um, so we're not worrying about the everyday Christmas, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day. We don't do Valentine's Day. We don't do it. Right. So you're very – you have a lot of knowledge in terms of like every single culture because – there's flowers that are involved with different cultures, like sweet right. 16s. You have the candles that you have to bring in. Correct. Plus the flowers. Correct. I remember yeah. when I got married, I, I was I got married in the Catholic church. I had no idea you give a bouquet to Mother Mary. Yeah. <laughs> they right. told flowers. me this like the day before. You have to go over and give the, <laughs> give, give the roses to Mother Mary. So. Yeah. The blessed mother needs flowers. Hey. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, you know? And it was so awkward. I didn't know. And then in the ceremony, they're like, get your flower. Don't forget. You got to go bring them over. And I'm like, so okay, funny. I put them. Yep. <laughs> but there's lots of things. And, you know, what's very interesting is I'm, you know, I'm Christian, um, you know, and I, I know probably more about the ceremonies and the little things that go into a ceremony than the person getting married, yeah. you know? Sometimes I'll talk about a chuppah and talk about all these different things that they need. And they're like, do I really need that? I'm like, yeah. 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 What do you call that? And I'm like this Italian girl telling, you know, this Jewish family what they need, you yeah, know, for their ceremony. This. That's great. But that's, you know, that's part of it. And I really enjoy that part of my job because I think to me, um, you know, all of this is so great and making things beautiful and whatnot. But the whole basis of this whole event and party is the marriage. And it's about the ceremony and the wedding. And to me, that's the most special part of of the whole day. And um, I think that that's the focus. And lots of times people sometimes lose focus of that. And so for me, I love, I love the ceremony and to make that as special as possible. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Anything else that you want to tell uh, listeners, Um, like advice for new brides? I would say have fun, have fun. Because the whole process yeah. is, it, it's just not about the day of your party because that comes and goes in, you know, eight hours. It, it's over. You got a five hour reception, the ceremony, getting ready, and that's over. But it's about going to the appointments. Yeah. It's about, right, make an event out of it. You're going to go for the dresses. Go for the dresses. Go have lunch. You know, have a good time. Take, you know, um, when you're interviewing a photographer or a videographer or whatever, make an occasion out of it. Um, because it's all, and it's about the the occasion you have with your mom and your fiance, and it's about the relationships and having a good time because it does go so fast. And to me, it's not just about the day. It's about the whole experience. And, um, it should be one of the most exciting times of your whole life. And, um, you should enjoy it. it. 
Don't, yeah, don't just have a good time. Don't just pencil it in. Got to do this, this, and that. Just right. make a make an afternoon out of it. And yeah. enjoy it. And make sure that you love the vendors you're working with. That's so, so important. Make that, that connection and um, and enjoy and have a good time with each person that you're, you know, you're booking. That's beautiful advice because, right. I, you yeah. know, really I see over and over again, I did this myself. So, you know, you're, especially for people that are really type A and a lot of brides are, you know, you just, you have like a schedule, you're, you have an itinerary, you have a list of things you need to do. It's easy to get kind of caught up in that and make it so clinical. Right. Um, if you can kind of step away from that and enjoy yeah. and allow yourself to enjoy and have fun. Right. I mean, I, you know, that that's key. It, it is key. it does go so fast. It, oh, super fast. And if you don't enjoy it, it passes you by. And then you say to yourself, what happened? This, yeah. this is all over already, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, listen, it's, you know, stopping and smelling the roses. Yes, exactly. That's that's exactly. It. Beautiful. Again, thanks for joining oh, us. Yes. Thank it, you so much for sharing your expertise. It's been it's, really, really wonderful chatting with you. Really. It's thank you. It's been a really good time talking to you girls. I was thank so, you. it was very nice of you to invite me at any time. Um, give me a call. Would love yes. to. I'm going to visit. I really <laughs> Definitely. Come I know. to the store. I have a beautiful showroom. Beautiful showroom. Come and visit us. But you have to let me at least buy a bouquet if I come. Okay. okay. Well, I'll make you a bouquet. You don't have to Perfect. buy it. I'll make you Perfect. a bouquet. My present. My present. So cute. Where is your showroom? Yeah. My showroom is at um, is on Route 34 in Old Bridge, Matawan. Oh. And um, I gave my family a time limit. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. We're door. wrapping up. But um, my store is on Route 34 in Old Bridge, okay. um, and it, I have a my whole. There's like a shopping center, and we're in pretty much the whole shopping center. So our production is on one side. Then we have our offices, which are really very beautiful, um, and then we have an, an art shop that's alongside of us. So awesome. lots of times we're in production with things. You can walk through our production area, Yay. see what we're doing, walk into our you know 800 square foot refrigerator. And uh, the staff is always um, great to stop. Oh, and- my God. Let's bring a camera. Um, Follow-up tour. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> sure. Come, come and see us like on a Friday. We're, we're yes. in full production. So much fun. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. Great. Cool. Well, anyone who's listening, please make sure to follow Marquee Florals um, by Kim on Facebook Correct. and Instagram. You can also visit their website at marqueeflorals.com. Um, Thank you so much. And I have to say, please subscribe and rate our Apple podcast, um, at, rate us on Apple podcast. It, it actually really helps us. So that would be great. If you're listening, uh, go to Apple podcast and rate us. Um, feedback is great too. So if you ever want to email us, you can, um, and you can visit our website, podcast.livepicturestudios.com. And please make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It's at Live Picture Studios. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yes. Thank you, girls. Stay safe. Yes, you too. Be healthy. Yes. Yeah, you too, Kim. Thank you very much. Thank Kim. you. Okay. Bye. So insightful. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Guys, please email us at podcast at livepicturestudios.com or hashtag LPS podcast. Any questions, anything that you want to ask us, if you want to come on the show, it's awesome. Let us know. This episode has been powered by K-Vibe Go Live. This podcast has been produced by Kuali, Natalia Delgado, Marcia Rosa, and Mark Falcon. Thanks, guys. And our editor, Nicole Palmetti. And music has been provided by Ian Post and Artlist. All right, until next time. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Happy planning. (laughs) Ha, <laughs>